Do I regret reading this book? Well, maybe. Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Oystein, and I'm trying to become a bookworm. Today we're going to talk about this book, The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. So why did I choose to read this book, or this brick, or what you call it? Well, it's Dostoevsky. So Dostoevsky is a very, very famous uh, author, and I've read Crime and Punishment earlier, and I really enjoyed that book, but I can't say I remember so much about it. I just remember that I really enjoyed reading the book. Of course, reading Russian authors from the 19th century makes you very intelligent, or makes you feel intelligent. This book is the very, very famous, and the author is famous, and I like the book I read previous. And of course, it has a very high rating on Goodreads. And I have to say, in this process of starting reading books and trying to become a bookworm, I'm sort of dependent on the good ratings on Goodreads to start reading the books, especially the books that are of this size, this magnitude, I need some reassurance that this read will be worth my time. Because it took a long time reading it. I feel like I'm in a silly mood today. Everyone knows this book and I thought this is a book I have to read, so I read it on the second try. Let's talk briefly about the content of the book. I will try to make this a short short summary, because the book is very long and in these kinds of cases you often tend to either have a lot of things to say about the plot or very little. I'm trying to say very little about the plot uh, because it's that kind of a book. Sounds weird, but I'll try to explain. The book is set in Russia in the 19th century. We of course meet the family of the Karamazovs. It's a father and three and a half sons. There's definitely three sons, but the last one is sort of uncertain, but likely not. The Karamazovs is kind of a rich family, but not the richest. I would say upper middle class. It's sort of hard to decide when reading the book, but they're not poor and no one actually has a job, I think. There are very few people in the book that has jobs. No, oh, there's a lot of characters, so some of them have jobs. The family consists of the father, which the author has given the same name as himself, so he is also named Fyodor. The full name is Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. The father is a vulgar and lustful and greedy old man. He is straight up an unpleasant figure and he has married into money in his first marriage. In his first marriage he has one son who is called Dmitri. Dmitri is in many ways like his father. He comes into the novel uh, asking for his inheritance and he is very, very uh, spontaneous, it seems, and lustful as well. But he also seems like a more pleasant person than his father. The second son is from the second marriage and he is called Ivan. I would characterize Ivan as being full of doubt and this sort of explains him quite uh, a bit. He comes into the book trying to help the father and the eldest son figure out the inheritance, but he does not succeed. The third son is called Alexei, and he is the youngest one of them. He is also from the second marriage. And in the start of the book, uh, Dostoevsky actually says that uh, this book is a depiction of Alexei's life, and he also expresses his admiration for Alexei as the person. He even calls him his hero. But he underlines that Alexei also is not without flaws. Alexei is the kind person. He is the person that listens to all the people. And he is also very religious. And the last person I'm going to mention now is uh, Smadyakov. That seems to be the last son of uh, Fyodor. But this is not uh, verified in any way. It's just hinted to that he might be. He is the family's servant. And is being brought up by the other servants of the house. I should say that none of the kids are actually brought up by the father because the father doesn't care much about the kids. You could say the book basically is about the brother's relationship to the father and in a sudden turn the father is murdered. And of course this murder is what drives the book forward after that event. So what I was trying to explain earlier is that the plot is quite simple, but it's also very, very complex. And of course, with the page count it has, there's a lot of things to write about. Or is it? The book discusses good and evil, it discusses doubt, if God exists or not. In broader terms, this book 
discusses a lot of things. The book has many sidetracks that completes the story and many of them are gruesome and that is because many of them are trying to bring up special subjects and trying to discuss uh, different topics. So gruesome events happen so they can discuss if God exists or not or what is good and what is evil and if something is all the way evil or all the way good or somewhere in between. I think I will stop the summary here. I'm afraid of spoiling too much of the book and we'll go over to some quotes from the book. I read this book in Norwegian of course and uh, I sort of picked out a couple of quotes I really liked and I thought that I'd find the English translation for these quotes but it seems not to be a success. I did not want to ruin this book by trying to translate it myself so I picked out some quotes that I found uh, after reading the book that I think shows a little bit what this book is all about. The mystery of human existence lies not in just staying alive but in finding something to live for. And then the second quote, I can see the sun but even if I cannot see the sun I know that it exists and to know that the sun is there that is living. And then we have a third quote, I love mankind he said but I find to my amazement that the more I love mankind as a whole, the less I love man in particular. And of course that last quote is a very very famous quote from the book. I hope this part made it a bit clearer what this book is really about and now I thought I'd share some of my thoughts around the book. As if I've not shared any thoughts so far. When I read longer books I really try to read as much as I can in the start just to get a bit of atmosphere and try to get taken by the book. I had to read until uh, page 300 before I got really into the book and before uh, things settled a bit and I got accustomed to the names. But a disclaimer, I really struggle with names in general. This book did not make it easy for me to remember the names of the main characters. I think I will take you on a journey. Let's go over the kids. The oldest one, Dimitri. Dimitri. He is also in the book often called Mitka or Mitya or Mitenka or Mitri Fyodorovich because he is the eldest son of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. This is no critique. This is just me telling you how I struggled. And the second son is called Ivan, but he's also called Vanya or Vanka or Vanechka, something like that. The third son is called Alexei, as I mentioned earlier, but he is also called Ayosha, Alyoshenka, Alyoshienka, Alyoshyekshyaka, Alekshyik, Yosha or Yoshenka. I had to have a list of the names um, by my side and go over that for every second page I read or maybe for each page I read for the first 200 pages. These are only three people. You also had about 20 other people who also had nicknames, most of them. And especially when the people don't have the same letter as the first of their character. So Alexei had Alyosha, that was easier than Dimitri who had Mitka. So if the person with the letter A could also have the nickname of A, that would have been easier. The way this book is being told, it's like the author is telling you a fairy tale. And I say this only because I'm accustomed to reading some fairy tales and it's in this uh, kind of uh, voice telling you what's happening. One thing the author does quite often is telling you what's about to happen and then goes back in time again to tell you that he he did get ahead of himself and had to go back. I don't really see the point in this. I could see the point in this in some books but in this book I didn't understand why that was necessary to do. It's a long enough book that many things are happening in the book so it's not a boring book in that way but especially after the murder of the father there are hundreds of pages discussing good and evil and God's relationship to humans and it's just too much. It was really, really boring for me. If I could wish uh, something for this book, it was that it was about 300 pages shorter than it is. And I don't think for my sake it would make a difference, but I, I don't think it would have been the masterpiece it is if the pages were removed, because I think that's what makes this book so famous. 
it's certainly a part of it. The book is from the 19th century with all this encompasses regarding slaves, women, and especially Jews are not portrayed in a good way at all. And it's sometimes feel very absurd reading this kind of literature because it feels so far from the reality we're living in now. But of course this could also be just the reality I'm living in. But it's important to read this book with that in mind that it's really from another time. A time that I'm very glad I am not a part of because there is a lot of sickness and illness in the book and people die from very very small things. Also people don't have jobs as I mentioned earlier. Kind of weird reading about all these people that doesn't do anything for work and I many times wonder what they actually do to have an income or if it's just that they're rich so they'll be rich forever because that's how it works. I don't know but it's an interesting thing to think about. What I really loved about this book and it's a thing that Dostoevsky is known for is how he describes people and he describes people not as good or evil 100% but they can be somewhere in between. This makes it feel like uh, things that could happen. It's an honest portrayal of people not thinking about them as 100% evil or good. They are just people and it makes it very lifelike. And this of course makes him uh, good at describing the different characters in the book and this in a thorough way. And this is of course crucial in this type of book where the whole book is trying to describe human relationships and human suffering and how people react uh, to each other and interact with another. In general, uh, reading long books makes you reflect for longer and this is of course a positive. Reading a thousand pages or 989 gives you enough time to think about the book while reading the book. When I read smaller books I tend to just finish them quite uh, fast and then afterwards I tend to not think uh, that much about them again. But since this is a long book you always can reflect while reading. It makes the book more impactful for me as a reader. I have to say towards the end of the book it got very very boring for me. I'm not going to spoil anything but the last pages of the book were fantastic. Uh, it gave me goosebumps. It was not only in the things that happened but in the way it was written. It's actually the first time I've read a book where the words uh, were beautiful to me in a way. I was really gripped by the way things were written. I thought at this moment I love this book. So that was kind of weird because I've been so frustrated for so many pages and then the ending of the book made me sort of love the whole thing. Now while I film this video it's actually a couple of weeks ago since I read the book finished and since then I haven't been able to give it a Goodreads rating. It won't be a five star for me and it won't be a one or two star, but I I can't make up my mind if it's a three or four. I don't think I'll ever make up my mind. I'm quite certain I'll, I'll never read this book again. But was this book worth my time? I still can't answer that question, but am I glad I read it? Yes. Does it feel good to say that I've read this book? Oh yeah. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it brought you joy or some kind of emotion. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and please comment if you have any comments to this video or in general. I'd love to discuss books more than I do today. So do that if you want to. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.